Hi, it's Dougie from Valto, and today I'm going to show you my top 10 SharePoint examples. But first I should explain that SharePoint intranets are not just one single site. There are a combination of different sites that are all linked together to make an overall intranet. Classic SharePoint sites had a bit of a bad rep. They looked awful and were very clunky. I aim to show you how modern SharePoint intranets can look amazing. Everything I'm about to show you is using native SharePoint, meaning if you like uh, a particular feature or web part, you can actually move them around and change the designs as you please. All colors and imagery can easily be changed to your specification. Full page screenshots of each of the designs can be found in a link in the description. So let's get started and take a look. At 10, we have our SharePoint hub site. Now this hub site is acting as the home page of your internet. So it will link together all the other sites with a really useful mega menu across the top, which makes it nice and easy to jump between the different areas without having to come all the way back to the home page. The other focus is around communicating the latest information and news articles through things like sliders, as well as news web parts. We can have these call to actions, which can take us to useful pages, such as policies or forms, and input text. So why not have a quote from your senior leadership team? We can also display the latest news articles from throughout the internet. So you can see here we've got news articles directly created on the hub. We've also got news articles that are coming from the learning and development portal. You can also link to news articles that you found on external websites, such as BBC News. Underneath that, we have upcoming events. Now, this is a great place if you've got upcoming webinars or training and you would like them to be posted in a visible way. Users can then click on the Add to Calendar button to automatically add the event to their calendar as a reminder. Then on the right hand side, we have this secondary content area, which I've placed here some useful links as often when you're duplicating links, it can make it a bit easier for people to find um, different resources. We can also have a people web part. In this case, uh, we're titled the senior leadership team, but this could be useful contacts. Now, when you select on a useful contact, you'll actually see their profile appear as well as their contact information and phone numbers. Underneath that, we put some example charts and these are known as quick charts because they're really quick and simple to update and add new data into. So if there's some KPIs or metrics that you'd want to quickly show. This is a great web part to use. Underneath that, we then have our video of the month. Now this is just a YouTube embed, but we can also use stream embeds as well if you have your own video content. In summary, the hub site will tie together all the other intranet sites that you have uh, and it will become your main homepage, your landing page before you navigate to those other areas. At nine, we have our department site. Now this is typically created as a template so you can roll it out to all of your business functions whilst keeping consistency of the site layout. You can typically find information on here about the department, about their uh, leadership, their teams, how they work and their culture, as well as useful resources that relate to that department. So let's say for example, if, if this was finance, then they might be offering out information about how to submit an expense request. We can also find out a bit of description about what the team does and their responsibilities, any useful links, any upcoming events, any documents or useful downloads, as well as news articles that could possibly roll up onto the intranet homepage as well. And number eight, we have our Leadership Connect site. Now this is a really important site where your senior leadership team or directors can give out useful information and also answer questions um, that are posted to them from around the business. They can have pages for things like mission and goals, general information about the leadership, um, as well as bio pages for some of the CEOs or senior leadership team members. Underneath this, typically you'll have things like countdowns to town hall events, links to bios, as well as embedding things like Yammer. Uh, this is where we can have a social feed where people can post questions um, that the senior leadership team can then come back and answer. We can see upcoming events and news articles which are posted to this site also. At seven, we have our learning and development portal. Now this is a great place to provide users with uh, links to training courses and video training materials. You can see across the top, we've got uh, a navigation to courses, but we've also got these large tiles, which are nice and easy to update the background images, uh, the text which sits on top of them and the links of where they're pointing to. We have some secondary navigation areas, 
as well as the ability to post notes from senior leaders. Um, these are our news articles, which we're then choosing to pull onto our internet homepage as well. We've got upcoming events again being used to track our training events, um, as well as a call to actions, which are linking out to external websites. At number six, we have our Microsoft 365 Learning Pathway site. Now, in itself, the home page is a little bit simplistic in terms of having a hero web part which links out to training materials. Um, we also display news items and events, but the whole purpose of this site is to try and help users get started with Microsoft 365 products, such as SharePoint Online, OneDrive, and Microsoft Teams, and all the other good products which are available. On this site, we typically would then drill down into content areas. So for example, getting started with Microsoft Teams, and then we can find loads of really useful resources about setting up meetings and using chats. When I drill down into them, I can find pre-built training materials and guides that I can easily follow. At number five, we have our control document site. Now, this typically is where you'd store all of your policies and procedures in one place that people can get access to easily. We can then break these areas down by, say, department or business function. So I could go and find all of my information related to human resources. Um, and let's say, for example, I'm e interested in the equal opportunities. I can then drill down into a page of information to read all about equal opportunities policy. And on this page, there might be content such as useful links, as well as videos um, and quizzes, surveys and downloadable materials. Now, we also offer a automation package which allows you to have a review and approval process for your documentation, your policies and procedures, which is really useful if you're trying to adhere to an ISO accreditation. You can find more information on that through the link in the description. At four, we have our onboarding portal. This site design is used by businesses regardless of their size, as onboarding is something that every business can find challenging. The idea is to provide a friendly modern SharePoint intranet that provides the necessary information for a new starter to begin work. This onboarding portal often contains useful links to tools and software that is recommended to be downloaded. It will typically contain an org chart, information on senior leadership, and what different departments are responsible for. At number three, we have our news hub. Now the news hub is a great place to roll up all the news from different areas of the internet onto one place. So it can be a one-stop shop to get all of the different news announcements. So whether it be keeping in touch or news directly from, say, senior leadership team, as well as social news and events which are coming up from throughout the business. At two, we have our volunteer hub. This internet design is typically used by charitable organizations or nonprofits to help provide information to their volunteers. However, it is not just used by charities. It can often be used by medium or larger sized businesses to coordinate volunteering days to give back to local communities. This internet solution can also be enabled for external access, turning it into an extranet. This means that the home pages of your volunteers hub can be shared to people outside of your charity organization without the need for them to have an Office 365 license. And finally, at the number one place, we have our crisis management portal. Now, the reason why this is number one is this site is very important as it's an excellent example of how SharePoint intranets um, can quickly come together to provide information to users that are in a time of crisis. In recent years, we have seen crisis management internet solutions popping up within intranets to assist with delivering internal communications during times of crisis, such as when the COVID-19 pandemic struck, earthquake displacements, as well as when employees are operating in war-torn countries. This SharePoint site offers value through using navigation web parts, such as the Hero web part, quick links, as well as the news web parts to help navigate to use users to critical information uh, really quickly. The news web part is typically used to provide updates about how a crisis is progressing, and this can keep all other colleagues in the loop. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you need help, we do offer professional services, including bespoke development, training packages, and pay-as-you-go support that can bridge those knowledge gaps within your current team. You can email me at dougie at valto.co.uk and we also offer free consultations to discuss your specific requirements. We'll then give you a no obligation quote. If that sounds good, I hope to hear from you soon.